Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to the LBC Week Six versus the Iowa Haluchas and Brady. Now, uh, before going into the game, I do want to explain my team as always, and I want to showcase my opponent's team. Um, I was thinking that I had already prepped it, but took actually I, I took the liberty of taking in the wrong team. So going over it strictly here, um, his complete team is. Tornado Sphirion, Gudra, Slowbro, Sarah Aura, Crookedal, Miensha, Roserade, Rhyperior, Talonflame, Red Eyes, and uh, Mega Mowal. Um, the team I was prepping for that I felt was gonna make the most sense versus me was Mega Mowal. Um, I had like eight Pokemon to prep for, so I mentioned the ones that I was considering and then we'll go over the six, of course, he brought. Uh, so Mega Mowal, Talonflame, Rhyperior, Roserade. Mega Miensha, I was gonna say, but Miensha, <laughs> Crookedal, Seraora, Slowbro, and Tornado Sphereon, I thought was the most likely. Um, and well, I think I predicted that quite right, as we do see a Gudra here, which I didn't expect. That said, Gudra is naturally really good versus me, mainly because it's specially defensively really strong and very good active, and uh, that should not be taken lightly. Um, other than that, uh, Crookedal looks the part, I think, is a very strong lead versus me, together with Rose Ray, which also feels like a good lead. Um, besides that, like everything else, Sarah Aura is tough. Sarah Aura is, in theory, a natural check towards Tabu Coco, which, in theory, could do really well. Both the Coca Lucha combo, which is something I'm bringing, uh, was something that I was seeing straight off the bat was going to be something that's going to be effective. Uh, how effective is up to my opponent, but um, I think like Slowbro makes that much sense because of that. It is a Pokemon that, all things considered, it actually takes a few hits quite well, and um, I should naturally fear it because of it. Well, <sighs> sorry. Uh, besides that, the team I'm bringing um, Garchomp, Sword Stance variant, able to deal with Slowbro, which could be a potential switching. Uh, we have a very, very fat milk tank to be able to take on Crookedal. It might actually be my only check towards that. It should be said that Pillow one was considered as a check for Crookedal because he did so well versus almost everything on his team. Um, but the reason to not take it was for one reason, or probably the most boring one. If Crookedal knocks up my Violite, then its effectiveness as a defensive check towards Crookedal is going to be wasted, plus it lacks recovery, so... Yeah, it was between those two. The other one, the other four here are Pokemon that absolutely needed to be here. Uh, Halucha, Adamant Variant, specially defensive, uh, able to take an Ice Beam from Slowbro if I'm forced to. Um, that's basically it. Um, then we have Houndoom, which, um, yeah, it does really well here. Um, I do believe we have Dark Pearls, Fire Blast, uh, Destiny Bond, and uh, Nasty Plot, too. Destiny Bond is actually here to kind of... If I, I know Crook isn't Scarf, then I could probably take it with me. Um, if uh, Fire Blast is going to be a high risk. Same with Gudra. Like, if Gudra takes me out here for... It actually works towards that, too. We didn't plan for it, but it's going to be a response if I'm forced to. Uh, then we have Nihilego, which is a Black Sludge variant. Um, fully offensive, actually. Uh, with a few HP investment. And uh, we have um, Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Power Gem and uh, Grass Knot to get it with uh, Toxic Spikes. And the last is Tabu Coco with uh, Grass Knot, um, Dazzling Gleam, Thunderbolt, and Roost. I was considering U turn, uh, but Dazzling Gleam does really a lot of damage towards everything on his team. And Grass Knot was here for Hyperior only, so Nazi Hyperior made me a bit sad. It absolutely did. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, with that said, I mean, let's go into the game. Like I said here, I was feeling Rose Trey was going to be probably his strongest lead. Uh, I also was considering um, Crookedal. Um, it should be stated here that even though I plan for Crookedal, uh, he is using a Crookedal that is way above my planning. Uh, and you'll be surprised how effective this one was. Uh, I'll lead off with my guard champ. I was really, really hoping Rose was the lead because I have a Yasha Berry to be able to capitalize on his power, possibly hidden power ice. He started with Crook, unfortunately. Um, the only main merit I have here is I can switch out to Milk Tank. Uh, I do assume Stellar is going to hit the fields, and if they do, so be it. Um, oh, sorry. <sighs> but yeah, Stellar is on the field. Um, like I said, quite predictable, but it is also a really strong play of anything, so definitely took the opportunity of taking that to his fullest advantage. Uh, I go for Stellar on myself, I'm actually outspeeding. Which he cannot showcase now, he's raw. 
I have nothing for facing um, Crocodile Lol, and that really, really, really threw me off. So he forced switch into my Renatus, and while I know now he's not Scarfed, Dazzling Gleam is not a guarantee KO'd if it is a more bulkier set, so I won't risk it. Um, I go into Mill Tank, basically to soak the Earthquake, go for Milkring, hoping he face me again, and I can go to something that is more effective versus Crook, something like Hehelego, or basically something that I can capitalize on, because as of right now, I have nothing to switch in naturally versus Crocodile, and I don't want to be in this position, because Self Rock plus Roar really shows to be just that tough to switch into, uh, did not expect it to be, as here comes the Roar, it's fine, uh, I actually get in my Halucha, the Guacamole, and um, from here, I'm actually gonna go for Sword Stance, I have no reason not to, I, I assume he's gonna have knockoff besides that, uh, he doesn't want to stand, go and switch directly to Slowbro, which is fine, now depending on his set, uh, he could be very well in range of actually I want to kill from the acrobatics because of the self rocks. Um, I do around 95% um, depending on the set, but uh, yeah, he is bulkier than I was expecting, but he has sap cannon. What do you know? He misses that, which is super unfortunate because, well, now I just pick up slow road just like that. Um, the reason I went for Acrobatics directly was because I really, really wanted the Denting Power of Slowbro. They did open up for the amount of mods to work effectively. Uh, now we're switching to Thundercat, to Sarah Aura. I do outspeed Sarah Aura. High Jump Kick is not easily KO. Uh, so it's banking on that 5%. And, and that's not happening. And that's Sarah Aura out of the way. So, yeah. Uh, things kind of turned really ugly very fast here. Um, now he switches into his Crocodile, going for the Intimidate, and... Um, I was considering going for another Soul Stance actually, um, but yeah, I, I, if in case he wants to be cheeky, but no, he stays in, I go into Power Ranger, we're knocking out the Crocodile, and that's about it. Um, yeah, about that. Uh, his next switch is going to be Sticky, the Gudra, and here where things turn quite interesting, because Unburdened do boost your speed um, by the speed you have. He, actually, he is actually gooey. Acrobatics will knock out, I think the crit matters. I can't tell, um, since I'm at plus one, not plus two, but Gooey actually put me down two stages, which I did not consider, and his rose rate is scarfed, it's gonna be showcased here that that's enough to outspeed me, uh, because Unburden boosts your actual speed by two, so I lost two stages in theory due to that Gooey, and he's gonna knock out my guacamole, and that's that. Um, didn't expect it, I was still feeling, you know, I switch in Houndoom, I wrap up the game, I have nothing to worry about. Uh, but that still was a very interesting thing to happen, I did not foresee that at all, and uh, for what it's worth, I think it was magical to see. Um, so of course with that said, go to Houndoom, go for Fire Blast, uh, he of course that speed is in Power Ice, it had to be in Power Ice or Electric, but it was Ice, so luckily for us I guess. So go for Fire Blast, Blast, Blast. <laughs> Now I got the Rose Raid. His last Pokemon is the Mega Mowal. And, um. <sighs> Sorry. I was leveling back and forth if I want to go for Destiny Bond or not. But I was thinking, I I'll try to go for Differential. The reason I say this is because it turns out I might have screwed this up. Because I go for Fire Blast, uh, as of course Mega Evolves. Um. So he goes for Sucker Punch? And, and that's alright, uh, if it's worth anything, it's quite alright actually, um, but basically another Sucker Punch uh, is not able to KO me, uh, but I missed the Fire Blast, I was thinking I can be cheeky, play around a bit, I go for Sucker Punch myself, just to out-prioritize his Sucker Punch, but he goes play rough, he's absolutely playing me for a fiddle and knocks me out, I was, at this point I was like, kind of sad, because I kind of wanted to bait him for just Sucker Punch shenanigans, that didn't happen. Uh, so I go directly to the Saxus, and I'm gonna wrap up the game with an Earthquake, basically, because Garchomp is absolutely killing Mobile, uh, 100%, no matter what set it is, really. Um, and that's gonna be a GG, and a 4-0 in my favor. Now, I do want to say to Brady, you know, I'm, I'm sorry how this game turned, because in theory, and I really mean this, Crocodile, I had nothing for it, as um, that facing variant was just something I did didn't prep for, and I didn't have something to come in naturally and could defeat it unless I got ship on it. Um, 
the only exception to that rule was Halucha. Now, had the roll on my sword stance, I am I don't know how that this game would have turned out. Same with if Sapkan was being connected there. If Sapkan had it connected, I I, I mean wow. <laughs> that would definitely have been a turning event that is absolutely knock out my Halucha. Um but besides that It would have been such a strange situation for me to be at. Uh, Scarf Rotary, brilliant bring, as uh, it could very well knock out my Garchomp, even though it was Yasha. Uh, knock out Nihil Lego with uh, Leafstone that had that, and Sludge would knock out Coco. So there were a lot of things that did outspeed that was going to be very, very effective towards my team. So for what it's worth, I think it was a brilliant bring for this game. Um, uh, besides that, I really can't say anything else. I'm... I felt my opponent here got the short end of the stick. I think he should have been able to... Uh, had a stronger game than he did have. I don't want to discredit him or anything like that. I don't want to pressure for that or anything. Uh, that sounded kind of dumb. It's not what I mean. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that... He plays a lot better than this game showcase. I think the facing aspect really, really threw him off. He was not supposed to get Halucha. And Halucha getting a free setup really ruined any type of future plans one could have. Um... I mean, if anything, the luck was on my side for, for all the wrong reasons. Um, that said, had had I known about GUI and how it did work and had my opponent know it, I'm, I'm pretty sure he would have used that way early to knock out or sack Gudra to get the GUI and uh, cancel my unburden. But none of us knew about it. <laughs> so, but now you know, you know, in the end of Generation 7, unburden can be ruined. I guess. <laughs> so... Really, with all that covered, I really hope you enjoyed this game. And yeah, join me on Sunday for the next upload with Who Was Really Better with Aloha Mola versus Vaporeon. So that's it for watching, and take care. Bye.